A binary heap is a partially ordered binary tree which satisfies the heap property. It has some similarities to a binary search tree, except the order is a little different. Each node has at most two child nodes. The heap property indicates a specific relationship between the parent and child nodes. You may have a max heap in which all parent nodes are equal than or greater to the, the child nodes. So you can see the, the biggest numbers on top and the smallest numbers are on bottom. Or you may have a min heap in which all child nodes are greater than or equal to the parent nodes. So the child nodes are the biggest ones and the parent nodes are the smallest ones. The order between child nodes on the same level does not matter. So you have 10, 6, and 12 here. Here we have 5, 6, and 1. Uh, you can see that it goes from a small number to a big number to a small number. The order doesn't matter if they're on the same level. Binary heaps are also complete binary trees. This means that all levels of the tree are fully filled, and if the last level is partially filled, it is filled from left to right. So if you see the example down here, so here's level 1, then we have level 2 here, level 3, level 3 is all the way filled, level 4 is only partially filled because there's nothing over on the right side here, but you can see it's filled from left to right. Binary heaps may be implemented as tree structures with nodes that contain left and right references, like what I showed in my binary search tree video. However, heaps are more often implemented as arrays. This is possible because of the partial ordering according to the heap property. We can just compute the parent-child relationship of the elements. Now this will make a lot more sense with this diagram here. So if you see this array right here, this is the array representation of this tree right up here. The number 1 is 20 and that's the root. You can see that right up here. And then 2 and 3 are the child nodes, 19 and 17 right here. And now I want to pull your attention over to these equations up here. So the, the left child is going to be i times 2. The right child is going to be i times 2 plus 1. Let me show you what that means. So if you look at 20 here, which is at, at index 1 in the array, also I should point out that there is no index 0. So when you're representing a heap, you're just going to leave index 0 as null to make the math work out a little better. So if we go back to index 1, well the equation for the left child is i times 2. So 1 times 2 would be 2. So yeah, 19 is the left child. And the right child is i times 2 plus 1. So 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3, 17. That's the right child. Now let's say we go to number 13 here. That's index 4. Well, if we go to the equation, i times 2, 4 times 2 is 8. So if you're at index 4 and you go to index 8, 11, yep, that's the left child. Now if we start at index 4 and we do the right child equation, i times 2 plus 1, that's 9. So if we go to index 9, yep, that's the right child here. So that's how you can use these equations to find the left and right child from an array representation. You can also figure out the parent. So the equation for a parent is i divided by 2. If we are on 11, that's index 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, index 4. And this really should be floor i divided by 2 because you divide the index by 2 and then round down to the nearest whole number. For instance, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, but if you round down it's 2, and then 2 would be the, the index 19 here. Also, you can see in this diagram that the last index is also the size of the heap, size 10. This diagram is a max heap. I'm going to show you the code for a min heap. But in the same file down here, we, I also have the code for the max heap down here. So you can check the link in the description so you can review this actual code yourself and you can re review the max heap on your own. But like I said, we're just going to review the, the min heap right now. But before I show you the actual code, I want to show you a visual representation of how it works when you're inserting and you're removing items from the heap. Those are the main two commands, insert and remove, and then there's one more I'll show you at the end. But let me show you this um, representation here. So you can see this is the array representation, and I'm going to insert some numbers, and you'll see them show up as a tree representation. So let's see, four. You can see four goes at the top, that's the, the root node. Now I'm gonna put in six. 6 just goes down to the bottom there, 8. So as it builds the node, one thing to keep in mind is that it's going to build one level of the tree at a time. I'm going to put in 
10 is going to be on the very left side. Now, so far, I've been putting them in order. But now I'm going to put in the number 5 here. And when I insert the number 5, you're going to see that it's, it's going to first go to the end of the array here. You'll see the array, which is going to first appear right down here. And then it's going to move it up to the correct position. So let's see that. So then, as you see, it checks what position to move it up to. So I'm going to put in a few other numbers here. Let's see, 16, 3. Okay, so you see it always puts in at the end of the array or the end of the tree, and then it moves it up to the correct position. Now I'm going to just show one more where I put in 1, where it's going to put it, um, put it down here, and it's going to move it all the way up to the top. And it's a check one at a time to see if it has to move it up. Also, uh, another thing would just be removing. When you re remove, you always just remove the smallest. It's going to remove what's in index 1, which is always going to be the smallest. And then it's going to pop the last node to the first node. And then it's going to sort them. So let's see how that works. So did you see that? So it moved the last node to the first node. And then it has to keep checking and keep moving it down until it gets to the right position. So let's move, remove 3. Okay, so now let's go to the code and you can see how that works in the code. So before we insert anything, you can see that we've created a heap with an array that just has one item and it's the item null at index 0. So when we insert something, we pass in a number, and we're going to push that number onto the end of the heap. So if you pass in the number 3, there's going to be index 0 is null, index 1 would be 3. Now, if the length of the heap is more than 2, that means there's more than one item in the heap. If it's less than 2, there's 1 or 0 items in the, in the heap, and that makes things really easy. But let's say it's it's a more than two. So we're gonna let the index equal heap.length minus one. So that means we're finding the last index in the heap. While heap at the at the last index is less than heap, and then see this equation right here? That is the, the parent equation. So now we're saying if the last item in the, the array, which is the item we just inserted right here, if the last item in the array is less than its parent, well, if it's less than its parent, we're going to have to move it up because the smallest numbers have to be at the top in the min heap. So if the index is more than or equal to 1, that means if we haven't reached the root node, then we're going to do this. Now this is ES6 destructuring syntax, which just means we are going to switch the node we just inserted with the parent node. We're going we're gonna to switch them. So here is the parent node, here is the node we just inserted, and now we're going to switch them. So the node we just inserted is going to be first, and then the parent node is going to be next. So it's just a way to swap them. For more information about the ES6 destructuring, you can check out my video about that topic. So if math.floor math index divided by 2 is more than 1, this just means if the parent node is not the root node. Because remember, this is the equation for the parent node. 1 is the index of the root node. So if the parent node is more than the root node, then we're going to set the index to math.floor index divided by 2. That's the parent node, which if you remember up here, we just put the number we passed in into the parent node. So now the index is still going to refer to the number we just passed in because that number has went into the parent node. And so now we're going to set the index to that node. And since this is a while loop, we're going to keep going through this and we're going to keep switching the, the node to its parent node as long as it is smaller than the parent node. Else, break. So once it's not smaller than the parent node, we just get out of this while loop and that's the insert. So let's go down to remove. It's a little more, more code, but it's some similar concepts. So we are always going to remove the, the top node, the smallest node. So we're going to let the smallest equal heap 1. 
So that just means that the first node in the array is the smallest node. So that's the easy part. The hard part is rearranging the array after you've removed that node. So if heap.length is more than two, that just means we have more than one node in, in the tree. We're going to set the first node in the tree, which remember was the smallest node, but we're going to set this to the last node. The last node in the array now gets moved to the first node in the array. Now we're going to do heap.splice, heap.length minus one. This just shortens the array by one. So we just remove the whole, the last index of the array completely since we've already moved that to the first index. If heap.length equals three, that means there's only two numbers in the, the, the tree and that makes things really easy. Just if one is bigger than the other, then we just switch them. This is the destructuring syntax again. So if the first one is bigger than the second one, then we switch it so the second one is bigger than the first one. And then we just return the smallest. If there are more than two nodes in the array, that's where it gets slightly more complicated. So we're just gonna set the index to equal one. We're gonna set the left to equal two times i, and the right to equals two times i plus one. Remember, that was just the, the equations from up, up above. The equations right here, we're just putting them into our, our formula down here. Now technically, you would not need to put this equation here since we know that i equals one. You could just put three here, you could just put four here, but this is just so you know we're using the equations from above. So we're st remember, one is the root node, so we're starting with the root node. So while the root node is more than or equal to its left child, or the root node is more than or equal to its right child, we're gonna do everything in here. That means we're going to have to, to basically move it down. We're going to keep moving it down until we get to the appropriate spot. So if the, the left node is more than the right node, then we're going to switch the root node with the left node. This is the destructuring syntax again, so we're going to just swap the nodes. So for instance, we would be swapping, if we we're on this node and this node, we just swap those two nodes, and then we're going to set the index to the left node. So we're going to set the index to be the node that was at the top node but has now been swapped. Else, that means the right node is less than the left node, we're going to switch the node with the right node. So we're just going to swap with the right node and then we just set the index to be the right node. So the, the node just moved down a little bit and then we set the index to point to the node that we just pushed down a little bit and then we have to set the new left and right node. So we would set the left and right node to be the left and right of the, the one we just passed down. And then, if the, the, the left child or the right child equals undefined, that means we're at the very bottom of the tree, so we can just break out of this while loop. And if it's not undefined, we just keep going through until we find the place where the node that we're moving down the tree is not more than or equal to the left node and is not more than or equal to the right node. Else if, if the length equals two, that means there should be only one element in the array, so we just cut off the last element else we return null. That means there were zero elements in the array to begin with, and then we're just gonna return the smallest element, which is just the element we just set up here. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is this. Now a common use case for the heap data structure is for heap sort. This is one of the most efficient sorting algorithms with average and worst case performance of O of n log n. Heap sort works by taking an unsorted array, adding each item in the array into a min heap, and then extracting every item out of the min heap into a new array. The min heap structure ensures that the new array will contain the original items in least to greatest order. So this is the function that you would use to do that heap sort. The hard part is creating the, all the code we just already went over, and this is just gonna use that code. So let result equals new array. Well, heap.length is more than one. We're gonna do this.remove, so we're gonna remove the element on top of the tree, and we're gonna push it onto the result. And we're gonna keep doing that until we've mo removed all of the smallest elements and push it onto the result, and it's going to put the elements in order. Well, that's all I'm going to talk about for heaps. Feel free to check out this code and create your own heap and, and add some items and remove some items just to see how it works. Thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.